Um, I'm Idi Sajadi. I'm presenting our work on super resolution. Um, let's just jump right in. Um, so the task of super resolution, single image super resolution is very simple. We just want to go from a single low resolution image to a high resolution image. That's pretty much it. And the question is, how do we do this? Now, the classical approach is we want to minimize the mean squared error between the produced image and the grand proof image. So we take the mean squared error pixel-wise, so we just take the distance between the pixels, we square them, we sum them up, and that's the metric that most people optimize for. Um, to evaluate the performance of single image super resolution models, um, we look at the PSNR scores, usually. Um, this is just a rescaling of the mean square error, more or less. Um, like most fields in image processing, single image super resolution has been dominated by ConvNets in the last years. Um, SRCNN 2014 was the first method, uh, the first work which applied um, neural networks and super resolution successfully, and then in the following years, um, people have been using deeper nets, more sophisticated uh, architectures to get higher and higher PSNR scores. Now, the idea is very simple. We just take our low resolution inputs, we feed them into nowadays uh, fully convolutional neural networks. We get our output and then we just take the loss during training between the grand truth and the produced image. And when we do that and we train our models, we get the image that you see on the right. Um, so what you're seeing here is actually the state of the art by PSNR. Um, we see the image is much sharper than the input. The edges are more clearly defined. Uh, but overall, the whole image is still very blurry. Um, this is very evident when you compare it to the actual grand truth. We see edges are fine, but the whole texture, simply because it was missing in the input image, it's also missing in the output image. So the networks seem to be unable to produce good-looking textures. To give you a small preview of our results, what you see in the middle right now is our best result. I'm just going to switch back and forth. Uh, you see the edges are slightly sharper, but the biggest difference is actually in the textures. So our method can produce realistic textures, um, which leads to an image which could even be mistaken as a real image. Um, so before we uh, talk about our method, let's see why PSNR is actually probably not the right metric that we want to optimize for. Let's take this toy example. Um, let's assume our data set consists of tiny bars of one by two pixels, which are either oriented uh, vertically or horizontally. These are, um, or, um, the distribution is random, so each bar could either be horizontal or vertical. Now when we downsample this image, let's say with nearest neighbor, we get this. So no matter what the orientation of each bar was, in our low resolution image, the whole information is lost. For this reason, any method, uh, no, no method can actually hope to reproduce the original image because it's impossible to know what the, or, or, uh, <coughs> what the original orientation was. And they, that's why when we optimize for PSNR, we get this. What you see here is it's the mean of all possible images of all possible high resolution images, which could have produced the low resolution image. Um, and the problem we see is exactly that we get this blurriness because we are averaging over a lot of different images. Um, and it's very easy to tell that this image is definitely not in the, grunge, uh, in the original data set. What we actually want is an image like the one on the right, where we see it's pretty much impossible to tell this image apart from the images in the original data set. Although when we look closely, we see that the orientation of each bar is actually not correct. But the idea here is this is not, int uh, this is not a big problem, depending on the, um, on the domain, because usually we don't even have a real high resolution image. We just want to go from a low resolution image to a good looking, plausible high resolution image. Um, and another point that I should add is the PSNR of the image on the right is actually lower than the one of the blurry image. So what do we do? We also take a residual deep convolutional network. The architecture is not even that important. Um, 
and we train it with a combination of different loss functions. The first loss that we want to look at is the mean squared error. This is the one loss that most people use. The second loss is the perceptual loss. Um, the idea here is instead of calculating the mean square error in the spatial domain, we feed both the estimated image and the ground truth into some pre-trained object recognition network such as VGG, and then we look at the features and we take the um, mean squared error in the feature space. The third loss that we look at is the texture loss. Um, this is, I think, very famous from the style transfer works. Um, instead of taking the loss on the VGG features now, we first calculate the correlations of the VGG features and then take the mean square error over that. Um, this has been shown, so these uh, correlations between the features have been shown to be able to capture textures and natural images very well, and this is exactly what we want in super resolution. We want good looking textures and realistic textures. And the fourth loss is the adversarial loss. So what we do is we um, add a discriminator to the training, and the discriminator gets either a patch from a real image or an estimated image, and it has to decide is it a real image or a fake image, and this encourages EnhanceNet to produce sharper images and also more realistic images. Now, when we take different combinations, um, on the left you see pretty much the input image, on the right you see the ground truth. Um, on the second column you see EnhanceNet when it was trained with the mean square error. So we see the edges again are sharper, but uh, all, the, all the textures are still missing. And when we train EnhanceNet with a combination of the perceptual, adversarial, and texture loss, um, we get the results in the third column, which is definitely not pixel by pixel accurate, like we cannot really hope to get the original images, but on its own it looks very realistic. Um, to relate our results, first of course we look at the PSNR scores, structural similarity, and IFC. There was a lot of different uh, metrics like this. Um, EnhanceNet trained with the mean square error actually gets set off the art by all of these metrics, but EnhanceNet PAT, which is actually giving us the good looking images, gets very, very low scores. Actually, in some, for, for example, the PSNR is actually lower than the bicubic input image. So these metrics don't seem to be able to capture the perceptual quality of our results. Um, so what we do is we ask people. We show them the ground truth image on top. We show them two images. One of them is EnhanceNet E, and the other one is EnhanceNet PAT. And we ask them which one of the images on the bottom looks more similar to the original image. And with this benchmark, 90% uh, of our cases, people preferred enhanced PAT uh, output. Uh, another quantitative benchmark that we are proposing um, is the object recognition image quality benchmark. The idea is very simple. We just take a pre-trained object detection network, such as ResNet. Um, we take some image data set where we have labels, for example, the ImageNet test set. Um, we take the original images, we downsample them, and then we upsample these images again with the different methods that we want to compare. The idea is if a super resolution uh, model does a good job at recovering the edges and does a good job at recovering realistic uh, textures, then it will be much easier for the object detection network to tell, for example, is this a cat, is it a dog? And when we do this and we compare different methods, we see that actually this benchmark seems to correlate much, much better with the perceptual quality, uh, with, the percep with the perceived quality of the results. Um, and actually, EnhanceNet PAT got us the best results in this benchmark. So a final look at different methods. Uh, these are methods for over the years. Some of them use Convenet, some of them don't. Um, we see over the years, the image quality has been improved on, but all methods, pretty much all methods, uh, including EnhanceNet E, give you blurry results. For example, the grass, it's always blurry in all images, and also the forehead of the zebra. Uh, EnhanceNet PAT, though, gives much sharper grass textures. Actually, if you look closely, the grass looks sharper than in the ground truth, which is maybe a good thing, maybe not. Um, and you see, for example, on the forehead of the zebra, where all information was completely lost in the input image, uh, the network actually detected, oh, there should be some stripes there, so I'm just going to hallucinate some stripes in that case. 
to conclude, um, we introduced a novel combination of loss functions for single image super resolution. Um, we reached a set of the art and qualitative and quantitative benchmarks. Um, we proposed this object detection benchmark. Uh, we are not claiming that this is the one solution. Um, this is more like a suggestion, and I will be very happy if a lot of people try this out, also in other domains, to see whether it actually works or not. Um, and the outlook, I still believe there is a lot of room for improvement, and perceptual evaluation is still an open problem. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, you can download a pre-trained model and play around with it on our website, and I would be happy to see a lot of you at our poster. Thanks. We have time for questions. Are there any questions? Yes. Can you please turn the microphone on here in this audience? Is, does this work? Yeah. Okay. So my question is, uh, you showed nice examples of sto stochastic texture and how you hallucinate new stochastic textures that have the same correlations of the VGG features. But I'm curious how, how well it does on uh, uh, regular textures, uh, uh, structured textures, where you actually see deviations from the straight lines and so on. If you had a, uh, you know, a pattern that has straight stripes and, and, or, or a checkerboard or whatever, would that still look good perceptually? Um, so it depends on the scale. Um, for super resolution, depending on what kind of upscaling factor you're using, um, large scale textures will be in the low resolution image anyway. So it's only about like recovering low scale textures, mm -hmm. uh, small scale textures. Um, with those, it depends. Sometimes it does a good job, especially in uh, striped patterns. Uh, checkerboard patterns should also work. Um, something, I can actually show this. Uh, sometimes, so this is actually a failure case. Um, what you see is, this is actually a striped pattern again, uh, but in the bicubic, so in the low resolution image, um, we have aliasing. So it's actually not easy to tell whether these stripes are in this orientation or in the other orientation. So what Enhancer just did, it did a good job on the left half, but on the right half, it actually produced the lines in the wrong in the wrong direction, actually like 90 degrees uh, turn. And another mistake was it just continued these patterns because it thought, oh, on that gray area, probably there were some stripes in the ground truth, but those were lost in the low resolution image, so it just continued producing lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions? I have a very quick one. Um, how much super resolution have you tried? That is, these are four times? Uh, yes, these are four times. Um, have you tried with more? So less works definitely, but the difference between uh, training it with the PSNR and uh, between these results is obviously harder to tell. Um, we tried more and it was actually harder to get it to work. So with eight times, um, the results didn't look that well. I do believe if someone sits down for another month um, and tweaks everything, it's possible to get nice results, but at least I could. Okay. Okay, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.